In this video, we're going to discuss the standard enthalpy associated with physical changes and physical transformations. And when I say physical transformations, I'm talking about anything that uh, changes your species but doesn't change its chemical identity, right? It changes some physical characteristic about whatever you're dealing with, right? So something like a phase change would be an example of a physical change. So for example, if you have water, let's say you have liquid water and you vaporize it into gaseous water, right? So you create water vapor. Obviously, you're changing something about the system um, and it doesn't change the chemical identity of that system. You're still dealing with water, right? It's the same molecule, but you've changed its phase, right? There's going to be an enthalpy associated with that change, right? There's gonna be some sort of energy change associated with all of these types of physical changes. And it's not just phase changes, things like ionization, um, those types of processes that, you know, you create an ion, but you're dealing with the same chemical species. Anything that fits in that category uh, is going to uh, is going to have an energy change associated with it. It's going to fall under the category of physical changes. Now, what do we mean by standard enthalpy? So uh, when we say standard uh, enthalpy, we're talking about the enthalpy taken at a standard state. And that standard state is dealing with a constant standard pressure of one bar. Right. So any um, any physical change is energy change that occurs at that constant pressure of one bar and usually it's done at a constant temperature as well but that temperature can vary usually it's taken at um, either 273 or 298.15 but obviously if we're talking about something like phase changes those occur at different temperatures so um, the only real standard here is the constant pressure and that is one bar now notationally when we're talking about a standard enthalpy we always add this little notation in the superscript so this little circle is always added to denote that this enthalpy was taken at standard state. Obviously, if we just write delta H, we're referring to an enthalpy change, but this superscript, this circle in the superscript, gives us a little bit more specificity, telling us that this enthalpy was taken at standard state. So I've got a diagram here of different phase changes, right? So, or of different phases, I should say. Uh, solids obviously would have the uh, be at the lower end of the energy scale uh, all the way up to gases right so from solid to liquid to gas so any transformation between these phases will have an associated phase change so um, if going from solid to liquid right this is melting or fusion uh, this will be your standard enthalpy of fusion so we denote that with delta H with the circle in the superscript and FUS, the subscript FUS for fusion. Uh, and if we're going from liquid to sol uh, liquid to gas, then that's gonna be vaporization, right? So then that's gonna be the standard enthalpy of vaporization. And if you're going to from gas to solid, that's sublimation. So then that would give us the standard enthalpy associated with that would be the standard enthalpy of sublimation. Right, so all of these different phase changes will have different uh, enthalpy changes associated with them. So going back to our example here, uh, this standard enthalpy would be the standard enthalpy of vaporization for liquid water. Right. And these are always um, these are always denoted as such in tables in your in the back of your textbook. Or you can look online and find standard tables with these values tabulated that are determined experimentally. Now, you might be wondering to yourself, well, there's an, a standard enthalpy of vaporization. Uh, why is there no standard enthalpy of condensation that's reported? Right. So the the opposite process. So what if we were to reverse this arrow? Right. What's the, the standard enthalpy of the opposite process going from gas to liquid? Well, um, there's something very nifty about the enthalpy uh, that allows us to get these values very easily. If we have all of these uh, three phase changes, we actually have all of the reverse processes. So let me show you what I mean. So let's say we have some state A or some state B up here. Right. Some state A down here. Right. And then so let's say that B is greater than uh, 
A on a, a enthalpy scale, right? So let's we can have a transition from A to B, right? So there'll be some enthalpy change associated with going from A to B, right? And obviously we can go, or let's say that this is reversible, and we can go back from B to A. Right, so you can think about this just like you would phase changes, right? You can vaporize, um, you can, you know, vaporize water and then it can con uh, condensate again as well, go back to being a liquid. So um, if we have these two processes, because enthalpy is a state function, right? So let me write that down. So H is a state function. This is a very important characteristic of the enthalpy, right? So enthalpy is a state function. And that gives it some very uh, unique properties, the fact that it is a state function. Uh, what that means initially is that um, it doesn't matter the path that we take, um, as long as our initial and final points, as long as what we're starting with and what we end with are exactly the same, then we can still calculate it by summing up whatever path, the enthalpy along whatever path we take, right? So what that means for this path here, right? Since this is a state function, if we do this, if we go from A to B and from B to A back, right? That's basically a cycle, right? We're starting and ending in the same place. Because enthalpy is a state function, that means if we sum both of these up, they have to equal zero. So you have delta H A B plus delta H B to A must be equal to zero. So what does that mean for the relationship between these two? Well, that means we just change the sign, right? So delta H A to B will just be equal to negative delta H B to A. Right, so what does this mean for our situation up here, right, for our phase change? Um, that means that if we have the enthalpy of vaporization, we intrinsically have the enthalpy associated with the condensation as well, because all we have to do is just add a negative sign to the delta H vaporization, right? Because it's a state function and these two statements are true, we already have everything we need to get the enthalpy associated with the opposite process. Okay, so the last thing I want to show you for this video um, is that there are a bunch of different types of standard enthalpies. Um, like I said in the beginning, it doesn't just deal with phase changes. Um, there's enthalpies associated with a lot of different processes. So obviously you do have phase changes. So these three are your standard enthalpies for phase changes. But we have other atomic and molecular processes that have associated standard uh, enthalpies. And this isn't even a fully exhaustive list, but these are a few that you should be familiar with. So um, the enthalpy of mixing. So if you take a pure substance and you mix it with something else, right, it's going to have a standard energy of mixing. Uh, solvation, if you, you know, dissolve something uh, in solution, there's going to be a delta H associated with that solvation process. Uh, atomization, breaking up a species into its atom, uh, atomistic components, so like if you took CO2 and, and dissociated it into carbon and oxygen, then there would be a, a delta H associated with that atomization process. Ionization, you know, um, forming, uh, putting up enough energy into the species in order to knock off an electron, right, and form the resulting cation, that's going to be a, um, a, a energy associated with it, delta H ion. And electron gain. So if you uh, do electron bombardment on some surface and, and charge it, then that's also going to be, there's also going to be an energy change associated with that. So this was just a quick overview of uh, the standard enthalpies associated with physical changes. Uh, specifically, the fact that enthalpy is a state function gives us a very powerful relationship here that we can take advantage of uh, in order to, you know, get the enthalpy for forward and reverse processes.